Look, we all like to waste money. It feels really good to do so. We've all been there. You're playing an addictive mobile game and suddenly you have nothing else to do. You've done all your dailies, you've done all your free pulls, and you're suddenly here by that urge, that desire. You think, hmm, well it's only five bucks. Five bucks for 1% chance to get the JPEG. I mean, that's basically guaranteed. It doesn't matter what it is, rhythm game, endless runner, tower defense, if it has a gacha system, you're going to want it. I know there are many who aren't tempted by those cells, but the need to have that JPEG of an anime girl. Well, that's just not me. <laughs> I have the smooth brain. Me want the JPEG, and me want it now. So let me get to the point. Cookie Run is an endless runner game with a gacha system. Uh, don't click off, wait. I know, I know, no one cares, it's not a huge game or an anime game with waifus. Give me a chance here, let me explain, okay? Each cookie character has individual abilities and most of all they got all these cute little designs and I love them all so much. To say that I have become obsessed with these little guys is a complete understatement. I just... anime girls just don't do it for me, okay? I've played so many gacha games and the characters all look the same to me and I just can't. But these little guys, these little guys are just... I have real life merch and I just, I just love them. That's one of the reasons I spent a thousand dollars on this game. I own literally every form of in-game collectible and I have every single thing maxed out. It's a hundred percent an obsession. I admit it, I'm not okay. However, this isn't a video about Cookie Run as much as I'd like it to be. This is how a game could lead me to spend a thousand dollars. I feel like no one really talks about it. I've seen countless videos about how these games entice you to spend money on them, how the games are designed to want you keeping more, high on dopamine. I just never see anyone discuss the real life cases in which governments and companies have intervened to stop silly little idiots like me from spending a thousand dollars on cute little baby cookies. In 2010, Konami decided that it was in their best interest to invest in the new and flourishing mobile game market. At this point, smartphones were only about 3 years old. Games were simple, Angry Birds and other app games of the time sold you power-ups and opportunities to make the game easier. However, Konami saw profit and they implemented a system that appealed to completionists. This is how Dragon Collection came to be. A simple card game with the same collectible mentality that many traditional card games like Magic the Gathering or the Pokemon TCG use. In short, you play through the game and would occasionally be able to pull from a random gacha for a chance to get a useful artifact. If you wanted more of these faster, you better be ready to hand out some hard cold cash. Well, digital, non hard cold cash. This is the game that is now largely credited to bringing the modern gacha system to gaming, and it was a huge success in Japan. Dragon Collection was never super successful outside of Japan. If you look up English trailers for it now and look at the comments, you'll see a time capsule of people blaming it for Kojima leaving Konami, which I honestly find super hilarious. This gacha concept worked and like anything that works and makes money, it soon started to be widely copied. And like so, gacha was slowly and meticulously changed to be the most profitable it could possibly be, leading to the now infamous complete gacha system. Basically, complete gacha makes it so in order to get very sought after super fancy JPEGs or artifacts or whatever, you would need to first complete a set of less fancy but random artifacts in order to be given the mega fancy one. In other words, people would spend sometimes thousands of dollars to complete a set in order to get the thing they actually wanted. And this worked! People did so for a long time. This was until 2012 when a major scandal related to Complete Gacha surfaced. A national Japanese newspaper published an expose on Complete Gacha. They claim that according to Japan's consumer affairs agency, Complete Gacha violated a combination card lottery law that had been in place so real life lotteries didn't take advantage of a very similar system. As soon as the practice of complete gacha became national news, the stocks for many mobile game markets did a big old plummet. Something had to be done. Before real laws could be made to stop this, six of the major mobile game companies banded together to create Japan Social Games Association, a way to self-regulate in order to appease Japanese consumers and more importantly its government. The Jasaga essentially made complete gacha a dead practice. It is important to know that Complete Gacha was never officially made illegal, but the practice is dead because companies don't want to bring national attention to themselves again. Also, this is a little bit of a trivia that I didn't know where else to fit in the video, but around the time this scandal was happening, the late Satoru Iwata made a public statement on behalf of Nintendo saying that they would, and I quote, never charge a player a fee for a chance to win in-game items. <laughs>
<laughs> what a jokester. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> a later piece of gacha regulation and a more well known one at that was the 2017 Star Wars Battlefront 2 incident where the infamously greedy and disliked EA tried to implement a loot box system which could only be used using in-game crystals, which of course could be bought with real life money. Unlike many other loot box systems, the rewards were not simple customizable items but were instead upgrades that would make your characters and weapons stronger. Also, they straight up put playable characters behind loot boxes, essentially creating a system where if you wanted to be competitive or if you wanted the full experience, you would need to spend money in order to have a chance against other players. This set the gamer's fear into a frenzy, hitting the mainstream news and bringing the gacha equals gambling debate back into discussion. This led to EA defending themselves with a Reddit thread that quickly became the number one most downbutted Reddit post in history at the time. Not even a day after the controversy came into light, EA announced that they would be removing all loot boxes from Battlefront 2. Because of this incident, Apple changed the App Store's guidelines in order to make it mandatory that all games with gacha systems must let their consumers know the rewards possibilities. This is exactly why nowadays all gacha games give you that little tab where you can see the probabilities. Many countries have debated on the ethical nature of gacha and its similarity to real gambling. Some countries like China have essentially banned the practice or at least highly regulated it. Look, I'm not here to take the stance that gacha needs to be outlawed. I understand that in the modern world of game development, loot box systems are one of the most profitable ways to make money in what is otherwise an incredibly expensive market that can easily lead to major losses. It's reliable. I understand that a lot of people are fond of gacha. It brings the brain the sweet sweet dopamine juice that is so so difficult for some of us to easily get. But just because something feels good doesn't mean that it isn't wrong. Gacha might not entirely be gambling, but it is at least comparable to it. Kids play these games, people with addictive personalities play these games. Something needs to be done about this. Microtransactions are clearly here to stay, but Gacha might not need to. Games might need to move past it. How they should do this is up to debate, I don't have all the answers. Something like Fortnite's Battle Pass comes to mind. I mean, it's not perfect, it still works on exploding children, but at least it doesn't use the principles of gambling to do so. Anyhow, I'm gonna go roll for some cookies. I'm very much part of the problem. Heidi howdy ho, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I mean, give it a subscribe or whatever the YouTubers say nowadays. I don't know. This is my first video on this channel. Well, I mean, not actually, but this is my first video on this channel with this new type of content. And I'm hopefully trying to see if I can upload a video like this every Friday. Um, if at the point that you're watching this there is more content, there should be some annotations here for some other videos you can watch. And in the description there's a link to my other YouTube channel where I'm going to be streaming uh, this upcoming week. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, that'd be really cool. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you have a good day.